So there are many different reasons why you might want to take a Java object in one of your programs and save it to a file. You might want to load it into another program or even another piece of software or just save it and load it back later. Now you could come up with your own custom file format where you're writing bytes of data that represent the state of the objects but there's no need to do this. There's some simple methods in Java where you can just take the state of an object, put it into a file and load it back later. In this video we're going to look at three methods. Binary where we serialize a Java object and put it into a file. XML where we use the JAXB library to create XML strings and put them into files and then convert them back later. And JSON where we use a library called Jackson to create JSON files. So we go through each of these in order now. Okay, so I'm going to make a simple project with a single class. We're going to instantiate a couple of those classes and then we're going to save them to a file. Then we'll load them back again. I create the project called Java Save Objects. I add a standard package and then add a class called Customer. I'm going to save these customer objects using the three different methods. In the customer object, I add a name field, which is a string, and a number field, which is an int. I then auto-generate a constructor, a getter and setter method for the two fields, and a two-string method. Then I add a class called save customers, where we're going to write the code to save the binary file. I'm going to write everything in a simple main method. First, I create a list of customers and add two customers to the list. The first customer is Bill and his number is 1. The second customer is Ben and his number is 2. I test this by just outputting the two records to the console. And here's the output, the result of the two-string method for both of our customer objects. So now I'm going to save these objects into a binary file. First I pick a file name. I'll call it customers with a bin extension because it's a binary file. I create a file output stream and initialize it with the file name. This is a stream that we'll use to write data to a file. We need to catch a file not found exception here because the file output stream is a checked exception. Next we need to create an object output stream and initialize it with the file output stream. This is a stream we can use to save our objects into the file. This is another checked exception, an IO exception. A file not found exception is a type of IO exception, so we can catch both exceptions in one here. Next, we just loop through our customer objects and write them using the write object method of the object output stream. Finally, we close the object output stream. I try and run here but it fails because there's a couple of things I need to do to the customer object to make it work. Firstly, we need to make sure the customer class implements the serializable interface. Serializable means that we're only using primitive data types and other objects which are serializable within the customer class. This means that if we're using pointers to more complicated objects inside our customer class, writing it to a file would not be possible. In the customer object, we're only using an int, which is a primitive data type, and a string, which is itself serializable, so we're okay here. The other thing I need to do is create a constructor without parameters. This is because when we read the object back on the other side, the Java system needs to be able to recreate it without parameters and then reapply the state of the fields on the other side. Now we can run and the program works. I refresh the Eclipse project and we can see the file has been written. It's not understandable to read though because it contains binary data. Okay, so we've saved our Java objects, our two customers into the customer's bin file. Now let's have a look at reloading it. To reload, I make another class, load customers. Again, I'm going to work in the main method of this class. I create a list of customers to read the objects back into. I copy the file name from before. This time, I create a file input stream because we're reading the file this time. Again, I've got checked exceptions that I need to catch. I'm going to use an object input stream to read the data. This is initialized with the file input stream. Like before, I catch the checked exceptions. 
I add an object reference and then a while true loop. The object input streams read object method will read the objects back out of the file and it will throw an EOF end of file exception when the file ends. So I break out of my while loop when that exception is thrown. I add a check to make sure the object we're reading is an instance of customer. If it is, I cast it to a customer and add it to our list. If it isn't, I'll output an error message. Finally, I close the stream and output the customer objects in a loop to the console. I run this and we can see that the objects have successfully read back out of the file. Okay, so that's shown how we can take our customer object, save two of them into a file. We could obviously save more if we wanted. And then we've loaded them back again and output them to the console. Uh, the advantage of this method is it's very simple. We just serialize the objects and write it to the file. Then we can read them back again, cast them back into the object type and then put them back into the list. The disadvantage is it's a binary file, so it's, we can't understand it if we look at it, and no programming language other than Java can understand it. But that's how to serialize objects, write them to files, and read them back again. Okay, so now I'm gonna convert this program to use XML instead of binary. So the first thing to do is add a wrapper class for our list of customers. It's easiest just to make a single class that contains our object and convert that to XML. I'm calling this class customers and it's literally just a holder for a list of customers. I add a constructor that takes a list as a parameter and a constructor that takes no parameters and I add getter and setter methods to the class. Next I need to add the JAXB library to the project. I could just include the jar in the class path, but here I convert the project to a Maven project by right clicking on the project, selecting configure and selecting convert to Maven project. Then I add the JAXB dependencies section to the POM XML file. Maven downloads the jars we need and adds them to the project. Next I mark our customers class with an XML root element annotation. This tells JAXB that we want this class to be convertible to XML. We could add other JAXB annotations to control the way the XML is formatted, but this is enough if we accept the default formatting. Now back to the Save Customers class. I convert the file name to XML instead of bin. I create the Customers class with a list of customers. I keep the file output stream and I create a JAXB context object using the static new instance method in the JAXB context, saying we want to work with the Customers class. I then create a Marshall object, which is the object that will convert the customer's object to XML. Here I'm setting the optional property JAXB formatted output to true. This is so we get a nicely formatted XML file with new lines and tabs. This is optional, but it's useful if we want a human readable XML file. Now I remove the old binary method and just ask the marshaller to marshal the customer's object to the file output stream. Close the stream and that's it. I refresh the project and here's our XML file. Okay, so there we can see the XML file that we've saved. Uh, we can understand it because it's in XML, so it's quite readable. Because we had the formatted um, output set to true, uh, we've got the indentation. So we can see we've got a customer bill number one and Ben number two. So not only, not only can we understand this, but also other things, other software, not necessarily written in Java can understand it. So now let's read this back in. To load the XML file back, I go back and edit the load customers class. First, I change a file name as before. This time I create a file with the file name, create the JAXB context as I did when saving the XML, and I create an unmarshal object. The unmarshal object works directly with the file, so I get the object out of the file simply using the unmarshal method, and then cast it to a customers class. I then read the customers list out of the getter method in customers, I fix the checked exceptions, and that's it. 
I run the program and read the XML file back. So there we've read back in our XML file. So that's method two. So the third method we're going to look at is using JSON. For JSON, we're going to use the Jackson library. The first thing I do is edit the maven pom.xml file to include the Jackson library instead of the JAXB library that we used for XML. I've now got errors because we've removed JAXB. I'll fix them as I go along. In the customers class, I remove the XML root element annotation. Then on to convert the save customers class. I change a file name to JSON instead of XML. Next, I use an object mapper from the Jackson library to convert the customers object to a JSON string. I use the writer with default pretty printer method to keep it human readable. Then I write the bytes out of this string to the file output stream and remove the XML code. I fix the checked exceptions and we're good to go. I run the code, ignoring for now the errors still in low customers, refresh the project and take a look at our JSON file. And there's our Bill and Ben object saved as JSON. So now let's load that back in. To load the JSON back, once again, I fix the file name. Again, I use an object mapper from the Jackson library. I simply get the customer list from the object mapper, passing it the file and telling it that we're reading a customers class. I then get the list out of the customers object, fix the checked exceptions, and that's it. I read back the JSON file. So they're quite simple. We've read back in our customers. So there we've got three different methods to save objects to a file in Java. We've covered binary, XML and JSON. The advantage of XML and JSON is it's human readable and you can share it with other software outside of Java. Binary is the simplest method where we just serialize the data and save it and it will also result in smaller files um, but whichever method you choose is up to you depending on the application you're doing so that's it for now thanks for watching